Are you saying that? Are you saying that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the ability to read the uh, what they call hieroglyphics was never really lost? Because if you listen to uh, you know European history, they're saying that you know it was lost after the closing. You know, well, that's what they, the intention was to make it lost, and they killed the priest. They found who can read it, who can write it. They slaughter you, and they get the documents they needed. They always they burn it. They burn thousands of libraries and temples. Some papyrus they hold back to uh, force us to translate, and then they kill us. When they come to Timbuktu in pre-colonial Mali, they did the same thing with Ahmed Baba. Ahmed Baba was writing like this. The, the Bambara actually is even ancient than the War of. But back then, Mali, Ghana, Songa it was the same area. Uh, Senegal is very, very new. It's just a river. <laughs> And this reminds me also the Nile River. Whatever they do around the Senegal River, that's the same thing they were doing around the Nile River. 
But when they got Ahmed Baba, they made sure that the, the Moroccan army kidnapped him out of everybody. They kill everybody, they said, don't touch him. They took him, make sure he, they force him to write in their language, to translate books and books, to, you know. After they don't need him, they think we have enough, they kill him. See? So, that, but right now there is an untouched city in Tuba. They, you go right now to Africa, Senegal, where I'm from, you see the biggest library in the whole world. And you don't see it in no textbook. <laughs> one man, one person, Sheikh Ahmed Bambra, wrote 15,000 pounds worth of paper. 15,000 pounds. And the French challenged him during the colonial time. There were 83 leaders there, like you know of Ben Zen, you know Samori Kuei, you know all those great leaders, they were all killed. They wanted to fight the French, the French were scared of the man-to-man -man combat. They tried that, they lost. So they stayed from the boat, started bombing them. And everybody died, but they couldn't touch Tuba. They couldn't bomb it. Because the man said, he yeah, have a spiritual shield. You know, no matter what you try, you cannot kill me. Let me demonstrate it, take me everywhere you want. Took him into exile, eight years to Gabon, seven years to Mauritania. He came back more powerful and built a magnificent temple with stones just like this. Just like in Calimbra, right now in 2003. So that's why I want to go back and forth. I want you to know that history, just like uh, Dr. Clark says, is the current time. Whatever we did 5,000 years ago, we can do 5,000 years later. Mm -hmm. Whatever was in the beginning will be at the end. So we got to be able to find something that can justify your history from the present time. If not, it's expanding. The Greeks, the Romans, the Europeans are able to always go back to Greece and Rome. And right now, they can justify, explain everything. So we have to have that connection. It's coming then, but it's too bad now. It's too too and too bad. We got to have the same things we're using, the bare feet, the making of ink, the scorching on the rocks, everything is still alive. Okay, let's go quickly upstairs and hold this look. This is like in ancient Egypt. A brother like this, who is as good as any guide I've ever dealt with in Egypt. And he's explaining it to us from our own cultural perspective. So we really have a gold mine here. Yes, yes. Make me want to move to Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And this, this is as significant as the Sphinx. We're talking about the body of a lion, the head of a, a pharaoh. We got the body of a woman, the head of a lioness. Wherever you see a king, there is a queen. Wherever you see a queen, there is a king. It's a balanced family. That's why Bruno was saying we have to reconcile, reconnect the African family. We need to get married, stay married. I don't want to get to it, but you know, we need to have families. We need to have male and female in the house so that the children feel comfortable and then continue that generation. This is where we get it from. And this is no no pejorative when you see, you know, women's breasts in Africa is okay. This is life. You know, you feeding, you know, the children, you breastfeeding is okay. Woman in Africa, out of nowhere, the baby cried, they just breastfeed them. There's no nothing, you know, shameful to it. Isis were doing it, Hattar were doing it, Hatshepsut were doing it. With the life symbol, the Aung, I need go, hey, when you translate it in Pula, I need go, hey, this is me, Aung. But the, uh, the Greeks, Napoleon and Champollion, didn't know how to read Pula or Wolof. They just used the abbreviation, the A, the N, the K, and the H, they say Aung. Just like you see CNN. You know, you got to know, or ABC, you got to know that this is cable, network, news. If you don't know English, you just say synon. Synon means something, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Really? Like, for real, this is no joke. Can you imagine 2,000 years from now, later, there was a collapse, of, you know, of explosion, everybody messed up, and some new race come and find a piece of satellite, CNN. They didn't know English. They will call it synonym. <laughs> and they will say synonym is somehow kind of communication. And it's going to become another language. That's what they mess with our language. But if you learn our language, you can decide for word for word. Everything in the hieroglyphics or Middle Nature is abbreviation. The Greeks know that. Because when you say ABC, that's really not ABC. That's Alpha, Beta, Delta, Zeta, 
Epsilon, Gamma, Lambda.